If you can answer all three questions by yourself, then you completely understand Riemann sums and the definition of the integral. So, let's look at what we have. We have a limit presented, and firstly we're asked to find the limit, which I think is easy for us to find, but where it becomes a bit tricky is when you're supposed to write the limit as an integral, and then evaluating the integral, we can use the fundamental theorem of calculus to, to integrate that. That's easy. So this is the toughest part, part B. But let's start with part A. So I'm going to solve each one, and uh, we'll write the answer somewhere here, but we're going to use the side of the board. Okay, please, if, you have, if you're not subscribed, subscribe to this channel, especially if you have watched more than one video on this channel. I need it. I need a like. I need a comment in the comment section. I need you to share it. I need you to just be kind. Come on, let's do it. Subscribe, okay? Thank you. Let's get into the video. Okay, so we have the Riemann sum and we're supposed to take the limit. We just have to do some algebra. So remember, um, it's normal. You just want to take a normal lim limit. So you want to expand this. Okay, we're going to distribute this and this is going to be the same thing as um, the limit. Okay, we say this is the limit as n goes to infinity. Uh, let's just use one arrow here. Okay, so it's going to be the sum from i equals 1 to n of 2 over n. If we distribute what's in here, if you do foiling, okay, I'm not going to go into the excess, into excessive details. This is going to be 1 plus, this is going to be 8 over n i, and then this is going to be 16 over n squared i squared. And then we have minus 1 coming out here since we have removed the parenthesis, so this is what we've got. So remember, this is basically 1 plus 4 over n times 1 plus 4 over n i. And if you do the foiling, 1 times 1 is going to give you this one, and then you do 1 times 4 over n, and then that's 4 over n i plus 4 over n i. Again, when you add these two together, you're going to get 8 over n because you're going to get two of this, so it's two times this, which is eight. That's how the middle term um, shows up. And this is going to be the product of these last two terms. That's 16 over n squared, i squared. Now remember, this i is not an imaginary number. It is the subscript for the summation. So if one minus one gives us zero, what we're left with is two over n multiplying this, and two over n multiplying this. These two are gone, so our next line is just going to be the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum from i equals 1 to n of when this multiplies this, we're going to get 16 over n times n is n squared i, okay, plus when this multiplies this, what we're going to get is um, 32 over n cubed, because n times n squared is n cubed, then we'll have i squared, and that's it. This is the limit we're supposed to take. So, um, we can say this is the limit as n goes to infinity of, we can now distribute, that's i equals 1 of n of 16 over n squared i plus the same thing you do the sigma, i equals 1 to n of 32 over n cubed i squared. Okay, now, it's actually... It makes sense to pull this to the back, but I usually don't, go, but that's the step. You know what, we've got to do it. Okay, so this is going to be the limit as n goes to infinity. So look, i is changing, n is not changing. So you treat 16 over n squared as a constant and pull it out. So you're going to end up with 16 over n squared, and then you have a summation of just the i's. i equals one to n plus, you pull out 32 over n cubed, you're going to end up with this. That's i equals 1 to n of i squared. And now, you have seen this before. The sum of numbers, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, well, it's going to end up being, I'm going to write it on this side. So this is the limit as n goes to infinity of 16 
over n squared multiplied by, you see this formula here, this can be replaced, let's write it somewhere here. You see, uh, this summation here, i equals 1 to n of i can be written as n into n plus 1 over 2. Okay, and remember if you distribute at this, you're going to get n squared plus n over 2. That's the version that I use because it makes my life a lot easier. n squared plus n over 2. And then we go to the next one, that's going to be plus 32 over n cubed times. Now what will this be? This expression here is the same thing. Let's write it here. i equals 1 over n of i squared will be equal to all over 6. Okay, so this is the formula for the sum of the first um, perfect squares. So starting from 1, 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared, that's the meaning of this. The meaning of this is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. This is 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 4 squared. Okay, so the formula for that is this and my version of that when you distribute is usually, it's easy to remember, just write it as 2n cubed plus 3n squared plus n. Okay, all over 6. So this is what I've got. I've got this set of terms and I've got this set, this set, that, sorry, this term and this term. So let's see what we get. This is going to be the limit as n goes to infinity. Now look, this can be split in two because firstly, these two can reduce this 16 and it's going to be 8. So let me do that first. Let me remove this two, make it 1 and make this 8. So if I multiply, I'm going to have 8n squared over n squared, which is going to be 8n squared over n squared. Then if I multiply this by 1, it's just going to be 8 over n squared. No, this is not 1, this is n. So this is going to be plus 8n over n squared. If I go to the next one, I know I can reduce this to 3, and this is going to be 16. Okay, um, 2 divides this, and this is 16. And then just watch this. I can distribute this into bits. Let's reduce this to 3. So this cancels, you have 3. This cancels, you have 16. So now I have 16 over n cubed. Multiplying the first term, it's going to be 32 n cubed over n cubed. And the next one is going to be not over n cubed, over 3 n cubed. There's a 3 here. Okay, and the next one is going to be um, 16 times 3, that's 48n squared over 3n cubed plus 48n squared over 3n cubed. Okay, and the next one is going to be plus 16n over 3n cubed plus 16n over 3n cubed. Okay, now this is where the work becomes extremely easy because if you've done a lot of taking a lot of limits as n goes to infinity, whenever the degree of the numerator is less than that of the denominator, that term will go to zero. Because by the time you divide both sides, you're going to end up with um, infinity here and something here. And anything divided by infinity, if it's constant, is going to go to zero. So watch how this makes my life a lot easier. This will not go to zero because when this cancels this, I just have 8. So my answer is 8 for the first term. Here, because the degree of the top is less than the bottom, this term will go to 0. The same thing here. I'm going to have this cancel this. I have 32 plus 3. Uh, 32 over 3, rather. And if you notice, this falls in that same category of what goes to zero because the degree of the top is less than the bottom. The same thing happens here. This goes to zero. So all we've been working for is just to get 8 plus 32 over 3. And that's going to be 3 times 8, 24 plus 32 is 56. So answer is 56 over 3. That is what you expected to get when you take this limit. Okay, now ideally... I think I did too much explaining, okay? But if it helped, then it helped. Let's go to the second part. So we've taken the limit 
but we know that this is the definition of the integral, okay? We could have done something like this, just said, hey, what is that integral? We have a to b, and then we have a function, and we say dx, okay? And that would just take the integral, we would get the same answer. The problem is we don't know what the function is. We don't even know what a is, we don't know what b is. And that's what this part b is asking. Transform this into this integral. Now, this is the definition of the integral, the formal definition, okay, as a Riemann sum. It is basically, if you get an integral, a definite integral, you can actually break it into small rectangles or rectangles, let's just stick to that, okay? And if you find the area of each rectangle and you multiply, you add them all together, that's the sum it should give you the area under the curve, which is what we call the definite integral of a function. Okay, the thing is, what we have here looks a little like this, but we can tell from the formula, what is multiplying the function is delta x. So you might want to start. Now, I, I, the first time I did this problem on my own, I didn't use the same expression, though I still got the same answer, but I just want to give it um, this, strategy where you just look at identify delta x first because you know by definition we know that delta x is b minus a over n so if you look here you can identify this as your delta x okay so you can say this is equal to 2 over n so obviously b minus a is 2 we know the gap between um, the beginning of your integral, where is it? From here to here is going to be 2. But we don't know what a is. We don't know what b is. Okay, so we, now we, have to still, we still have to go find what a or b uh, is. So here, this implies that b minus a is equal to 2 from here. So we know that when we write our integral eventually, when we do this, the gap from here, let's say this starts from 1, this has to be 3. If it starts from 0, this has to be 2. We know that's the gap. So that's the first information. And as soon as we know what A is, we will know what B is. Because B is not involved in the rest of this. What is involved is A. Let's say we're doing the right end point. Okay, so now let's go to the inside. How do we know? Well, remember that X, this X sub I, is equal to, if we're using the right endpoint, is going to be a plus delta x times i. And it looks like this guy is being multiplied by i, so this should be delta x. But you can see that the delta x is supposed to be 2 over n from here, but this one is doubled, so it's like 2 delta x. That doesn't mean that we're starting from 1 to, but we're not, it's not a plus delta x, it's now a plus 2 delta x, which leaves you confused. Okay, now I don't want you to be confused because this is probably presented in the standard form of the quadratic, because this is a quadratic function because of the square. I would recommend that you distribute. So because I'm having a hard time discovering exactly what a is, what I'm going to do is distribute this and see how I can pick up my A or pick up what, what my... Because I know delta X certainly has to be uh, 2 over N, okay? So let's see if I can make something out of this. So let's see if we have 1. So let's quickly work this out. We're going to have 1 plus um, 4 over N. You know, I would like to write this 4 over n as 2, 2 delta x. Okay? And I'm going to square it. Remember we said delta x is 2 over n, so 4 over n is 2 times delta x i. And if we distribute this, okay, we open this up, this is going to be 1 plus 4 delta x i plus... Um, what do we have? Plus 4 delta x squared i squared, okay? Delta x squared i squared. Let's just put this everything squared, okay? And then we're going to have, at the end here, we have minus 1. So, 
this will take care of this and what you end up with is just 4 delta x i plus 4 delta x i squared. Do you notice something that the a appears to not be there? Everything is just delta x. Remember here your x sub i, well, all the terms of x in the function are supposed to have a added to them. But with this expansion, you see that there is no a being added to delta x. So it's more like you have 4 times 0 plus delta x i. Do you see that? And when you go here, it's like 4 times 0 plus delta x i, delta x times i squared. So I can confidently say that this is 4x sub i plus 4x sub i squared. So the function I am integrating is actually the function uh, 4x plus 4x squared. That's it. So this is a little technical, but if you get frustrated, if it is not too obvious, I would recommend you distribute and figure it out. Sometimes it is very obvious. I said I did it another way because I took this to be my delta x and then I had some modifications which modified this and I ended up with the same um, answer when I integrated, but the function was different. That's, it's a little crazy, but that was what happened. But let's go and just finish this up. So now I can say that my function is 4x plus 4x squared. Okay, so in integral form. Now since I know that my a is 0, I said a equals 0. So I can go back to this expression here and say that b minus 0 equals 2, which means that b equals 2. So I have my integral. Therefore, the definite integral is the integral from a to b. My a is 0. Where is it? Um, hey, I should have written a equals 0. I didn't even write a equals 0. Okay, so I have a equals 0, a equals 0. Okay, so it has to be 0 to 2. And the function I have is 4x plus 4x squared. 4x plus 4x squared. And then I have dx. That is the integral that was transformed into this. It may not have been written plainly this way. It may have been factored because the way you, if you look at it, it's possible to factor up. 4 and then factor out x and then you have 1 plus x, okay? It doesn't matter as long as it's the same polynomial whether in the distributed form or in the factored form, you're good, okay? So this is the answer to the second question. This is the answer to b. That's the definite integral. And then the third part, the fundamental theorem of calculus 2, you can use to evaluate that, which is easy. Let's just do that in the space that is remaining. So for the last part, which is our home run, we just do our regular integration, which is, I'm going to take out the 4, that's the integral from 0 to 2 of x plus x squared dx. And I know that this is going to be 4 times the integral of um, 1 half of x squared plus the integral of one third of x cubed evaluated from zero to two. Well, if you plug in zero, nothing is gonna show up, so that's a zero, but if you plug in two, there's gonna be two squared. What is half of four? It's two. So the answer is four into two plus, if you, the cube root, sorry, this is gonna be, uh, the cube of two is gonna be eight, eight over three, so it's two plus eight over three, everything multiplied by four, um, this is going to be 6 plus 8, that's 14 over 3. So that's 4 times 14 over 3, and that's 56 over 3, which looks like the answer we got when we took the limit of this expression. Don't stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.